<laughs> My hip belt's completely broken. <laughs> Ripped. I don't think I've had condensation like this in my life. Everything got sodden. The inside of my tent. Absolute state. The military flag is flying. I need to get my ass out of here ASAP. Boop! 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 Hello, you beautiful lot. Look where I am. I'm back on Dartmoor. Yes, yeah, she is my little home from home. And today, well, over the next couple of days, I am going to be continuing with my tour bagging adventure. So for those of you that don't know, I'm on a mission to try and bag all of the tours on Dartmoor. What classes as a tour, however, is quite debated upon the Dartmoor tour bagging scene. Basically, definition of a tour, is a granite rocky outcrop, like the one you see behind me. However, if you've ever been to Dartmoor, you will know that a lot of Dartmoor is granite rocky outcrops, and therefore there are loads and loads of different lists. So I'm going for the 160 tour list. I am currently on tour 52, and I'm hoping over this weekend to bag around another 15. So here we go, the first tour is right behind me. Let's bag it. <laughs> I'm almost at the top. Oh. Boop. There we go. And here it is, tour number 53. Sourton Tour. Yeah, it is. Alrighty, so just behind me there is Sourton Tour. And this way, is Branscombe Loaf, which is going to be my second tour of the day and tour number 54. It's a bit windy up here, so I'm crouching behind one of the granite boulders. Um, I really need to buy a mic for this phone, but here we go, ready to boop. Tour number two of the day, Branscombe Loaf. Tour number 54 of the day. Let's turn you around for a boop and a view. Oh, boop. Look at that. It's getting higher. Alrighty, in true Becca fashion, there's been a drought already. <laughs> I've done two tours and my bag's broken. To be fair, this is a mountain warehouse bag. It was a cheapo, but it's done me probably a thousand miles in those wild camps, and it has been breaking a little bit. But this is why I always carry duct tape gang. Like, <laughs> we gotta get it through another 15 tours. The side has just gone through. So I'm gonna try and duct tape these seams because it's now pinching my booty and hope we can make it last another 15 tours. Drama number two, guys. Always make sure you replace your duct tape regularly because apparently the stick wears out. I've had <laughs> this stuff on here for so long. It's lost its stick. Shit. I mean, to be fair, this is one of my old hiking poles. I left my normal one with Gorilla Tape in my friend's car. So this is about five years old duct tape. I got this. I got this. Come on, cross your fingers for me. We've only done two tours, mate. <laughs> It's going to be all right. I have faith. Recommendations for a new backpack? Please put in the comments section below. <laughs> Female specific, I've got a short frame. Oh, I love it when a little bit of bride away pops up. <laughs> uh, so Dartmoor has loads of these bride aways kind of throughout the whole of the moorland. So some of this hike, I will be off piece in it, trying to bag some tours. Other bits, the tours are really well connected. So you'll end up with bridleways like this that end up linking onto kind of really well trodden paths. Um, the other time I'm following sheep tracks. So it really depends on time and distance um, and terrain for these sort of hikes, which is why I leave them quite free flowing because in summer, someone might have plotted a route that they can easily do in three hours. But in February, you might not even be able to walk for a mile of that terrain because it's all got boggy so yeah I just leave it very free flowing but trails like this oh I love I love it <laughs> I thought 
thought for a hot second that this was a really beautiful floating flower. <laughs> it's a banana skin. Oh man. Alrighty, here we go. Heading on up. Tour number 55. Tour number three of the day. Just behind me. That little one there is Grentor. And it looks quite low down in comparison to the path I've been walking at. So this is why you really, really need to check your tours and work out what is a tour and what isn't, especially if you're doing the 160. Because if you're doing the 700, any little thing you can boot me. Um, but the 160 is a little bit more specific. And Grentor is on there. Oh, boop. Barren, barren and beautiful. She's a windy one up here, but here we go. Tour number 56, hunt tour. Oh, boop. Hey. <laughs> She's just been watching me going, what the fuck? <laughs> I know, mate. Yeah, I'd run off too. The sun has come out. So while I am at Hunt's Tour entertaining the sheep, I thought I'd have a little lunch break. So my lunch today is Vegemite wraps. I really, really love Vegemite as a hiking fuel, especially if you're a little bit of a dirty vegan like myself. Um, there's B12 in here, which is really good for you. And as you know, it's a nutrient that's really hard to get on a plant-based diet. It's not the most high in protein. So somewhere I will show you. I have bags of nuts and fruit for each day. And I also eat things like Trek bars, which are around 10 grams of protein per bar as well. So yeah. This is me. Lunch stop, baby. But look at that view. There's just no one around. I love it. What you've got to do is walk a couple miles into Dartmoor and you are on your tod. I've decided to extend the walk a little bit, go up and around the marsh. It was just looking a little bit too deep and dangerous. Um, and there's no signal in this area just in case anything did happen. So, yeah. There's the, the marsh behind me. This bit's a bit better. Here we go. Ah, how are you, Reeds? Hey, you're all right. Ah, nice. So for those of you who have heard me talk about Invisibox before, this is the sort of things I mean. As you probably saw in that clip, it is literally like there is a river running underground. Um, and that happens a lot up here. Sometimes you can tell where they are because they've been existing for a long time and there are reeds growing. Other times you just slip down. So when you see me doing these hikes and I do things like stick to a road or detour to get on a bridleway or just pitch for the night early, it's because I'm really, really wary of those things occurring under my feet. Um, I think a lot of national parks and areas in the UK get it anyway, um, but Dartmoor is especially well known for their Invisibox. Um, and actually on quite a sad note, you'll often come across skeletons of the wild Dartmoor ponies and things like that, um, that have tragically got their foot stuck and died that way. So I don't want that to happen to me. Was I in frame? Was she in frame? Yeah, yeah, she was. Getting better at this, isn't she, mates? Look at the view. Hang on, I'll turn you around. Here we go, round two at the top, just so you can see what I can see. Stunning. As always, check to see if there are red flags flying. Because I am now entering a new zone. Alrighty, here it is. Walking up. Tour number 
look at that. So that little ruin up there would probably have been a tin or a mining or a mill ruin. And this river would have turned the mill or the wheel. Look at this cute little bridge built over it. Stunning. Sun's going down now though, I've got to get a scooch on. The Teletubby coat is on. I don't think there was a pink Teletubby. Um, but if there was, this definitely would be what she looked like. <laughs> it's got so cold. Anyway, I am now on to tour number 59, which is just up in front of me, and it is Dinger Groats Tour. That's wrong, Dinner Groats Tour. Do you know what? I've looked at my phone like eight times to remember the name now. I'm just going to put it below because it's neither of those, but it's something Groats. Anyway. <laughs> Let's flip you around, let's bag this tour, tour number 59. God, I look like a right knob, don't I? <laughs> it's windy up here, but I am on tour number 59. Let's give her a boop. Uh, boop. Sun is about to set within an hour, I think at 5.30. I've got two more tours that I'd like to bag today. One is sharp tour, one is hair tour, but hair tour is in the no camp zone. So I'm gonna see what the terrain's like, what sharp tour is like to camp on, and yeah, work out whether I risk it for a biscuit or wake up earlier tomorrow. But this, oh my gosh, this was such a beautiful tour. Like, wow. I know I'm a little bit of a geek for these rock formations, but it is a pretty one, this. <laughs> Can you see those rays? Look at that. Actual, I don't know if this phone's gonna pick it up. Actual rays of sun. Oh, she's so pretty. I love Dartmoor. Oh, this tour's beauty as well, isn't it? Look at that! And this is tour number 61. And where I'm going to be sleeping tonight? Let's give her a boop. Come on, here we go. Actually, I'm going to pause it because I don't want to hold my phone going up that steep thing. Uh, boop! There we go. Sharp tour. This review. Let's get the tents out, shall we? Hey! <laughs> Alrighty, this is where I'm going to pitch tonight. Um, the wind is pretty strong, not going to lie, so I've managed to find a place that didn't have bog, didn't have animal poo, and is kind of out the wind. Hopefully, the wind stays like it is, doesn't change direction, and I'm protected by this beauty of a tour behind me. Here we go. Time to unpack, Miss. Okay, so a couple of things I really like about the MSR Hubbard NX is the lightweightness of it. So for a freestanding tent, this comes in at, I think, 1.1 kilos. One of the main things that does this is the carbon fiber poles. These actually are freestanding poles. So they hook into all four corners and mean, as you'll see in a minute, once I've got the inner up, I can sort of wiggle it around to make sure that I'm gonna be in a nice flat space when I lie down to sleep. I've also got this in camo green. Um, I find that the green color really helps me blend in with sort of the rocky outcrops here. It's not too bright and garish, but it's also not 
too difficult to see if you're an animal or if you're a farmer driving a Jeep. So it blends in quite nicely, can't really be seen from a distance, but can be seen up close. And it does have the reflective guys. Anyway, waffle over, that's a little bit about my tent. I'm gonna put it up. <laughs> Look what I've done. I've realised my coat's ripped. Um, this is a brand called Frog Togs, and to be honest, they are really good. They're really lightweight, well, ultra light hiking gear. I think this coat is less than 100 grams. It's absolutely amazing. Um, the problem is, once you get a rip in it, they just keep ripping. Um, the good thing is, they are recyclable. So, all of this, they've designed it so you can recycle it, which is actually really amazing um but it's not so amazing if there's rain tomorrow because girl's got no duct tape or sheet to seal herself up so <laughs> just all my kits breaking today isn't it oh here we go let's get the bed set up anyway and then i'm gonna cook some dinner has almost set and I don't know how much you can see me because I've got my head torch glaring on my face so I'm a little bit blinded right now I can't really see the screen but I wanted to show you what I am gonna cook for dinner and not gonna lie this is either gonna be freaking amazing or absolutely <laughs> disgusting but pre-made backpacking food is quite expensive so i've been experimenting with some recipes so instead of the standard spaghetti that you would normally have in a spag bowl which takes 10 to 12 minutes to cook i've decided to try and make it a quick cook spag bowl and instead of using spaghetti i'm going to be using a pack of ramen and i'm going to nickname this a rami bowl if it works, bloody genius, take credit. Everyone go out and make a rami bowl. If it doesn't, we're just gonna pretend this never happened. So the plan is carbs are super noodles, some dehydrated soy mints. Um, this literally rehydrates and takes on whatever flavor you put with it. And it's 52% protein. So if I'm putting in 45 grams, that's like 22, 23 grams of protein in there. It's amazing. I've also got, you can't see it because the light's so bad now guys, but I've cut up some dehydrated mushrooms and got a spag bowl sauce. <laughs> Let's give it a go. You don't know these things unless you try them. So yeah, I'm gonna get the hob on, gonna start boiling up some water, get the ramen noodles in, and we'll see how this turns out. Eh, she's boiling away. Now because I want to make this look pretty, because potentially I'm gonna take an Instagram picture, although it's so dark and foggy, <laughs> I don't think it's gonna happen. I'm gonna pour the hot water into a nice little coconut bowl with the ramen in it, that's gonna keep it warm while I do round two. Round two being the mints and the mushrooms that are gonna bubble up in a little bit of water. Here she goes. <laughs> I can't stare an older camera at the same time. Oh, it's not looking too bad. <laughs> there she is in all her glory. Ramen, protein, veg. Need to make myself a cup of tea. Empty mitts. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Rami bowl. Is it going to be a go? Oh my God. That tastes just like spag bowl. I'm not even joking. <laughs> That's so good. Mm. It's a new recipe, guys. Mm. I'm a genius. I'm an absolute genius. There is that much moisture in the air tonight. <laughs> the inside of my tent is dripping. <gasps> oh. 
Oh, no wonder I feel so cold. Look at it. The condensation tonight is so bad. I've never had a night like this. It is just pooling. So I've taken my bin bag out of my backpack. So I always use a bin bag as a pack liner and then have a spare plaggy bag. I'm going to, to protect my stuff, shove this down the side and yeah, hope that helps keep my sleeping bag dry. I'm trying to get the camera to focus in the side of the tent to have a little late night chat to you guys but it just ain't working. There is so much humidity in the air that it's almost cloudy inside the tent as well. So I'm going to wish you all a beautiful night's sleep and I'll see you in the morning. Night! Morning views. Good morning, gang. <laughs> I'm coming to you from inside the tent. Oh, I need the coffee this morning. Mm. Last night was a bit of a drama. Um, I'm going to flip you around in a second. But when I say I don't think I've had condensation like this in my life, I don't think I have. Humidity, I went and checked, is apparently 95 to 98%. So everything got sodden. My sleeping bag is sodden. My hair's wet. My hair is actually wet from being inside the tent. The stuff in the vestibule, I wish I'd recorded it this morning. My my cup and that had probably about a centimetre of water in. And that's just going to be from the water that's kind of come in the air into the vestibule. It's just mental. Unfortunately, I'd taken my electronics out to keep warm in my sleeping bag. The electronics bag has got wet. Good test, because turns out, after all the years of using it, it's got mouldy and that's affected the waterproofing. Um, I'd also, talking of waterproofs, put my waterproofs underneath the sleeping mat to try and fill a little hole that there was. Um, I guess it was like a little rabbit hole or where a rock had come loose. Um, and <laughs> my waterproofs are soaked. Here we go. Absolute state all the water it's just terrible on a positive i realized i had bought some waterproof socks now these waterproof socks they're by seal skin personally they're not that waterproof um but i think they're gonna add that extra layer so i've got my injinji toe socks um because these are gonna add sort of a protective barrier um so that i don't get super duper chafing um, and then I'm going to add these on top and hope <laughs> it keeps my feet a little bit dry. <laughs> you can, oh, there's literally just a puddle inside. I could filter it and drink from it, mate. It's absolutely disgusting. God, that's a vile thing to say. Why would I even say that? <laughs> This means the military are training here. Alrighty, I am heading on to my first tour of the day, which is hair tour, but I don't know if you can see through the fog, there is a flag. There is a flag flying, which means I'm about to enter into a military shooting zone. So I'm gonna boot this, do a 180 and turn around because although sometimes they will pencil off certain zones, to do training it's the red flags that you've got to look out for so boop and gone mate i can't do the lower half of the tour bag in route 
All right, I don't know how well you can see this, but in the background, there are definitely some military items dotted around this tour. So training is definitely 100% inactive. I need to get my ass out of here ASAP. Completely forgot it was a Monday today, didn't I guys? Because I'm normally up here on the weekends. Rookie error, always tell you to uh, check, make sure there's no military stuff going on. And there is, so yeah, flags flying. Gonna get my butt out of here. Alrighty, so this bit here is saying I'm now back in the Oakhampton area, which is safe to roam. This side is the Willsworthy area, which is where they were doing their firing. So I'm now back in the safe zone. It's around 11 o'clock now and so I'm gonna stop off while the weather's fingers crossed a little bit drier just to make myself first lunch. Um, this is literally going to be some miso soup packets because they're really high in sort of salt. I'd need that for the day, sweating going through. More Vegemite wraps and some less than I had. <laughs> before some bruschetta. Another reason why I'm also boiling up the soup is because I left my catadin in the car. Now, I don't know how long I'd left it in the car for and therefore whether the filtration system has been affected um, by freezing because these filtration systems, when it freezes, it expands, um, I don't know what you call them, but basically it means the bad microbes are now able to get through because the holes are now big enough for them to be able to do so. Sometimes I just think I'm incredibly lucky in unlucky situations because right behind me here is a lower Donna Groats tour. And if you remember yesterday, I hit up Donna Groats tour, the name that I couldn't remember. I didn't realize that there was a higher and a lower. So if the military weren't firing, here's some of the planes going overhead. And if they weren't training, I wouldn't know that lower Donna Groats tour existed until I got home and check the list. So, lucky in unlucky situations. Look at it! Poking out through the mist. Let's go and give her a beep. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and there we have it, tour number 64 and number two of the day. Lower Dunner Groats. <laughs> Let's get to the next one. Because the weather is coming in pretty bad again, I don't want to risk climbing up to the very top of this. So I'm going to follow the grassy knoll to as high as I can get before it reaches the granite. I'm going to boot there. <laughs> to be honest, I made it quite far up. Right, let's turn you around. Ready for boop number 65. Oh. So this has just happened. <laughs> My selfie stick tripod is broken. Could probably fix it with duct tape, but guess what? That's the third item I've needed duct tape for today and yesterday. <sighs> is any more kit gonna break or fail on Becca today? Place your bets now, like. <laughs> what have we had? We've had I'm not even going to count it. I'm not even going to count it. The rain's about to start. I don't want to damage my phone. Right, I'm off to bag another tour. <laughs> I don't know how you YouTubers do it, honestly. Like, <laughs> it's, just, it's just a joke at this point, isn't it? Oh. 
number 66 i think little lynx tour i've got one tour left for the day and that is great nodden or great noden not sure how to pronounce it i'm gonna head there now and then i'll be joining hopefully back up to the bridleway that you saw me walk on near the start yesterday back over the sourton tours off to the car to dry up because she soaked me <laughs> Everything's wet. <laughs> Alrighty, that that you can hear is the river. Oh man, and great nodens that on the other side. It's definitely great. The path is non existent. I've walked up maybe 15 minutes one way, 15 minutes back. Unless I'm to climb up this, which if you can see, you can't see, but underneath there's just loads of shale. It's an accident waiting to happen. So I don't really know what to do now. There is a path on the map, um, probably about 20 minutes that way, on the left of the stream, about 100 metres. So I'm tempted to just kind of mission through this sort of area on this side, see if I can get close. So that's the plan, gang. That's the plan. Um, but visibility, shocking. So it's not like you can really wing it on this terrain either and just hope you're going to end up somewhere anyway i'll turn you around and show you the shale that's sort of the shale fall um that you get in parts it is really really steep as well like i don't know how well this camera is showing it but one slip here i am at tour number i think 57 if it is a tour great noden let's give her a boop Oh, boop. Alrighty, that is it. I'm on the home stretch now. Behind me, you can't see it, it's Sourton Tour. I might as well be telling you it's Buckingham Palace and giving you a tour of the UK at this point <laughs> because the views, oh mate, it's just been my face and up close zoom ins of granite boulders, isn't it? What a YouTube video. Like, share, and subscribe, please. <laughs> Back at the car, mate, before the sun set. Yeah, she is. And the final thing to check before we go. Did the waterproof shoes and waterproof socks leave Becca with waterproof feet? They are almost dry. No way. Seal skins, I take it back if the other one is dry as well because the socks are soaking. Oh, I mean, there's a little bit, you can see where the muddy water slipped through, but I've got dry feet. <laughs> that is it, Becca is done. I'm off to drive home with my dry feet. <laughs> if you have liked this video, please do drop a little thumbs up to help the old algorithm and comment down below. And if you would like to see more of this sort of stuff, do consider subscribing and hit that little ding ding notification bell so you can see more of this in the future. And I promise I'll try and time it when the weather's a little bit better so you see more than just mist. <laughs> All right, have a great one. See you again. Bye.